Colossians chapter 1. Dear friends in Colossae, my name is Paul, and I have been chosen by Jesus Christ to be his apostle by the calling and destined purpose of God. My colleague Timothy and I send this letter to all the holy believers who have been united in Jesus as beloved followers of the Messiah. May God, our true Father, release upon your lives the riches of His kind favor and heavenly peace through the Lord Jesus, the Anointed One. Our hearts overflow with thanksgiving to Father God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Every time we pray for you, for we have heard of your devoted lives of faith and the tender love you have for all His holy believers, from the first time we heard about your conversation until now, we faithfully prayed for you that you would access all the treasures of your inheritance stored up in the heavenly realm. For the revelation of the true gospel is as real today as the day you first heard of our glorious hope. Now that you would have believed in the manifestation of God. This is the wonderful message that is being spread everywhere, powerfully changing hearts throughout the earth, just like it has changed you. Believers of this good news are bearing the fruit of eternal life as they experience the reality of God's grace. Our beloved co-worker Epaphras was here from the beginning to thoroughly teach you the astonishing revelation of the gospel. I can always depend on him, for he serves you faithfully as Christ's representative. He's informed us of the many wonderful ways love is being demonstrated through your lives by the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Since we first heard about you, we've kept you always in our prayers that you would be filled to overflowing with the revelation of God's pleasure over your lives. This will make you reservoirs of all wisdom and spiritual understanding. We pray that you would walk in the ways of true righteousness, pleasing God in every good thing you do. Then you'll become fruit-bearing branches, yielding, yielding to His life and maturing in the rich experience of knowing God in fullness. And we pray that you would be energized with His all-explosive power from the realm of His magnificent glory, filling you with great hope and joy in the Holy Spirit. Our hearts soar with gratitude when we think of how Father God made us worthy to receive the glorious inheritance freely given to us. This is what every holy believer is qualified to experience by living in the light. He has rescued us completely from the dominion of darkness, and by His love He has translated us into the realm of His kingdom where we are one with His beloved Son. For in the Son all our sins are cancelled, all we have the release, and we have the release of redemption through the ransom price He paid, His very blood. He is the divine portrait, the true likeness of the invisible God, and the firstborn heir of all creation. For the Son created everything, both in the heavenly realm and on the earth. All that is seen, all that is unseen, every seat of power, realm of government, principality, and authority, it was all created by Him and for His purpose. He existed before anything was made, so now everything finds completion in Him. He is the head of his body, which is the church. And since he is the beginning and the firstborn heir in resurrection, he must always be embraced as the most exalted one, holding first place in everything. For God is satisfied to have all his perfection dwell in Christ. And the in the by the blood of his cross, everything in heaven and earth is restored and brought back to himself back to its original intent, restored to innocence again. Even though you were once distant from Him, living in the shadows of your evil thoughts and actions, He reconnected you back to Himself. He released His supernatural peace to you through the sacrifice of His own body as the sin punishment on your behalf so that you would dwell in His presence. And now, there is nothing between you and Father God, for He sees you as holy, flawless, and restored. 
Continue to advance in faith, assured of a firm foundation to grow upon. Never be shaken from the hope of the gospel you have believed in. I preach this glorious news all over the world. I can even celebrate the sorrows I have experienced on your behalf. For as I join with you in your difficulties, it helps you to discover what lacks in your understanding of the sufferings of Jesus Christ experience for his body, the church. This is the very reason I have been made a minister by the authority of God and a servant to his body, so that in his detailed plan I would fully equip you with the word of God. There is a divine mystery, a secret surprise that has concealed, been concealed from the world for generations, but now it's being revealed, unfolded, and manifested for every holy believer to experience. Living within you is the Christ who floods you with the expectation of glory. <laughs> this mystery of Christ, embedded within us, becomes a heavenly treasure chest filled with the riches of glory for His people, and God wants everyone to know it. Christ is our message. We preach to awaken hearts and bring every person into the full understanding of truth. It has become my inspiration and passion in ministry to labor with a tireless intensity with all the supernatural strength he imparts to present to every believer the revelation of being his perfect one in Jesus Christ. Chapter 2 I wish you could know how much I have wrestled in prayer for you and for the church in Laodicea and how and for the many other friends I've yet to meet. My prayer for all of you is that your hearts will be wrapped in the comfort of heaven and woven together in love's fabric. The certainty of your faith will give you access to all the riches of God as you experience the revelation of God's great mystery, Christ unveiled within you. For our spiritual wealth is in Him, like hidden treasure waiting to be discovered heaven's wisdom and endless riches of revelation and knowledge. I want you to know this so that no one will come and lead you into error through their persuasive arguments and clever words. Even though I'm separated from you geographically, my spirit is present there with you. And I'm overjoyed to see how you are disciplined, deeply committed with such solid faith in Christ, the Anointed One. In the same way, you receive Jesus our Lord the Messiah by faith. Continue your journey of faith, progressing further into your union with Him. Your spiritual roots go deeply into His life as you are continually infused with strength, encouraged in every way, for you are established in the faith you have absorbed and enriched by your devotion to Him. Beware! that no one distracts you or intimidates you in their attempt to lead you away from Christ's fullness by pretending to be full of wisdom when they are filled with endless arguments of human logic. For they operate with humanistic and clouded judgments based on the mindset of the world system and not the anointed truths of the anointed one. For he is the manifestation of all the fullness of divinity living in human form. And our own completeness is now found in Him. We are completely filled with God as Christ's fullness overflows within us. He is the head of every kingdom and authority in the universe. Through our union with Him, we have experienced circumcision of heart. Now, all the guilt and power of sin has been cut away and removed from us. It wasn't because of something good that we have done, but because of what Christ, the Anointed One, has accomplished for us. And there is more. We've been buried with Him, immersed into His death. Our baptism into death also means we were raised with Him. When we believed in God's resurrection power, the power that raised Him from death's realm. This realm of death describes our former state when we were held in sin's grasp. But now we've been resurrected out of that realm of death, never to return. For we are forever alive and forgiven of all our sins. And through the divine authority of his cross, he counseled out every legal violation we had record <clears throat> on our record and the old arrest warrant that stood to indict us, 
indict us, he erased it all. Our sins, our stained soul, and our same shameful failure to keep his laws. He deleted it all, and they cannot be retrieved. <laughs> no. Everything we once were in Adam has been placed onto the cross and nailed permanently there as a public display of cancellation. Then, Jesus made a public spectacle of all the powers and principalities of darkness, stripping away from them every weapon and all their spiritual authority and power to accuse us. And by the power of the cross, Jesus led them around as prisoners in a procession of triumph. He was not their prisoner. They were his. <laughs> Since you have been set free, why would you allow anyone to judge you because of what you eat or drink or insist that you keep the feasts and observe new moons and celebrations or the Sabbath? All of these were a pro but a prophetic shadow and the evidence of what would be fulfilled for the body is now Christ. Don't let anyone disqual you, disqualify you from your prize. Don't let their pretended sincerity fool you as they deliberately lead you into their initiation of angel worship. For they take pleasure in pretending to be experts of something they know nothing about. Their reasoning is meaningless and it comes from their own opinions. They refuse to take hold of the true source and honor him as the head. <clears throat> but we receive directly from him, and his life supplies vitality into every part of his body through the joining ligaments connecting us all as one. And he is the divine head who guides his body and causes it to grow by the supernatural power of God. For you were <clears throat> included in the death of Christ and have, been, and have died with him to the religious system and powers of this world. Don't retreat back to being bullied by the standards and opinions of religion. For example, there are strict requirements. You can't associate with that person. Or don't eat that. Or don't touch that. <laughs> These are the doctrines of men and corrupt customs which are worthless to you spiritually. <laughs> they may appear to possess the promise of wisdom in their submission to God through the deprivation of their physical bodies. It is actually nothing more than empty rules rooted in religious rituals. Chapter 3 Christ's resurrection from the dead is your resurrection too. This is why we are to yearn for all that is above. For that's where Christ sits enthroned at the place of all power, honor, and authority. Yes, feast on all the treasures of the heavenly realm and fill your thoughts with heavenly realities and not with the distractions of the natural realm. Your crucifixion with Christ has severed the tie to this life. And now your true life is hidden away in God as you live within the Anointed One. And every time Christ himself is seen for who he really is, who you really are will also be revealed. For you are now one with him in his glory. So consider your life to this natural realm is already dead and buried. Live as one who has died to every form of sexual sin and impurity. Live as one who has died to diseases and the desires for forbidden things, including the desire for wealth, which is the essence of idol worship. When you live in these vices, you ignite the anger of God against these acts of disobedience. That's how you behave before you were joined to Christ. You once were characterized by your evil deeds, but now it's time to eliminate them from your lives once and for all. Anger, fits of rage, all forms of hatred, cursing, filthy speech, and lying. Now that you have embraced the new creation life as the true reality, lay aside your old Adam self as, and its masquerade and disguise. For your new creation life is continually being renewed into the likeness of the one who created you, going, giving you the full revelation of God. In this new creation life, your nationality makes no difference, or your ethnicity, education, or economic status. They matter nothing. For it is Christ that means everything as he lives in every one of us. You are always the dearly beloved by God. So wear the garment of virtues of God. Since you have been divinely chosen to be holy, be merciful as you endeavor to be 
to understand others and be compassionate, showing kindness towards all. Be gentle and humble, unoffendable in your patience with others. Tolerate the weakness of those in the family of faith, forgiving one another in the same way you have been graciously forgiven by Jesus Christ. If you find it fault with someone, release the same gift of forgiveness to them. For love is the supreme and must flow through each one of these virtues. Love becomes the mark of true maturity. Let your heart always be guided by the peace of the Anointed One who called you to peace as part of His one body. Always be thankful, overflowing with gratitude for your life union with Christ. Then the manifestation of God will live in you richly flooding you with all wisdom. Teach the scriptures as you teach and instruct one another with the Psalms with, and with festive, festive praises and with prophetic songs given to you spontaneously by the Spirit. As the fountain of grace overflows within you, sing to God with all your hearts. Let every activity of your lives and every word that comes from your lips be drenched with the beauty of our Lord Jesus, the Anointed One. And bring your constant praise to God the Father because of what Christ has done for you. Let every wife be supportive and tenderly devoted to her husband, for this is a beautiful illustration of our devotion to Christ. Let every husband be filled with cherishing love for his wife and never be insensitive towards her. Let the children respect and pay attention to their parents in everything, for this pleases our Lord Jesus. And parents don't have unrealistic expectations for your children or else they may become discouraged. Let every employee listen well and follow the instructions of their employer, not just when their employers are watching and not in pretense, but in faithful in all things. For you are to live your out for we are to live our lives with pure hearts in the constant awe and wonder of our Lord God. Put your heart and soul into everything you do, as though you are doing it for the Lord Himself and not merely for others. For we know that we will receive a reward, an inheritance of kingdom authority from the Lord as we serve the Lord Yahweh, the Anointed One. A disciple will be repaid for what he has learned and followed. For God pays no attention to titles or prestige of man. Employ Chapter 4 Employers, treat your co-workers with equality and justice as you know that you have a lord and master in heaven who is watching you <laughs> be careful to pray <laughs> as intercessors who are fully alert giving thanks to god <laughs> and pray for me that god will open a door of opportunity for us to preach the revelation of the mystery of christ for whose sake i'm imprisoned <laughs> pray that i would unfold and reveal fully this mystery that my delight for it is my delightful assignment Walk in the wisdom of God as you live before the unbelievers. Make it your duty to make him known. Let every word you speak be drenched with grace and tempered with truth and clarity, for then you will be prepared to give a respectful answer to anyone who asks about your faith. Now let me tell you about what's happening with me. I've sent Tychicus <laughs> to you so that he could find out how you are doing in your journey of faith and, and bring comfort and encouragement to your hearts. He comes with my recommendation, for he is a beloved brother in Christ, a faithful servant of the gospel, and my ministry partner in our Master Yahweh's work. I have also sent Onesimus, who is from your city, to return to you. He also is a beloved faithful brother who will inform you of all that we're enduring in Rome. Aristarchus, a fellow prisoner here with me, sends you his love, and Joshua, who is also called Justice, along with Mark, the cousin of Barnabas, also sends you their loving greetings. You have already been informed that if Mark comes to you, receive him warmly in Christ. These three men are the only Jewish converts to Christ who have aided me here in the work of the kingdom of God, and they have been a great blessing to me. Epaphras, who is also from Colossae, sends his loving greetings. I can tell you that he is a true servant of Christ, who always labors and intercedes for you. 
His prayers are filled with requests to God that you would grow and mature, standing complete and perfect in the beauty of God's plan for your lives. Epaphras has a such great zeal and passion for you and for those who are from Laodicea and from Hierapolis. And Luke, the beloved physician, sends his warm greetings to you and Demas also. Continue to pray for the peace and blessing of the believers in Laodicea and pray for dear Nymphus and the church that gathers in her home. Once you read this letter publicly, please send it on to the church of the Laodiceans and make sure you read the letter that I wrote them. Be sure to give Archippus this, dis this message. Be faithful to complete the ministry you have received from the Lord Jesus and don't give in to your problems until, until they yield the victory God intends for you to have. Now, Finally, I, Paul, write this with my own handwriting, and I send my loving greetings to you. Remember me in my imprisonment, and may the blessings of God's grace overwhelm you. Loving Christ, Paul. <laughs>